right as well as always scares me as well as um, improvements to mental health social connectedness motor vehicle safety economic security food access and healthcare access and we also see decreases in the rates of asthma and substance use next slide please so for history this uh, the active people healthy Colorado quick wins originated out of the development of Colorado downtown streets streets which was uh, created through a partnership among the Department of Local Affairs the Department of Transportation and CDPHE to provide an easy to digest resource that helps local leaders community members and technical professionals work together more effectively to create better streets um, it's supportive of effective planning and decision making to improve streetscapes and also in this tool uh, quick wins are identified as an effective way to get started in this work. Next slide, please. So CDPHE has been funding community based quick win projects for four years, over which time we've committed funding to 38 projects throughout the state. In April of this year, we opened our, our year four applications and we received 63 applications and over $260,000 in funding requests. So we initially advertised $30,000 of, of available funding, but we were able to leverage additional internal funding to commit over $60,000 to quick win projects throughout Colorado. And we began the exciting process of notifying recipients last week and the response has been incredibly positive. So clearly there is a great need for these types of funding opportunities in Colorado. Next slide, please. So through this process, we've had many success stories, including the Hotchkiss Air, um, Air Art Bench Project. Uh, so the town of Hotchkiss has a vision to be more walkable and socially connected for its growing senior population. Um, it was known that older adults just would avoid Main Street because there wasn't a place to sit. So the town worked with local artists, including those pictured on the screen, uh, to design benches that were placed along Main Street. After the project was completed, the town was able to add more benches through local sponsorships. Um, and to quote a community member, this project has been so well received in the community and it is one of the most fun things I did this year. Next slide, please. In Denver, the Community, the community Active Living Coalition or CALC and the Denver Public Library partnered on a project to supply bicycle repair toolkits to libraries. Uh, these kits are available for two hour checkouts with just the library card. Um, and in addition to the fix it kits, uh, they trained over 80 library staff to receive a fix a flat training from local partners. So while this project started as a pilot at seven libraries, it eventually grew to 26 libraries in just one year. And the toolkits proved to be a success with 225 checkouts in the first year, primarily at branches serving priority equity areas in Denver. And this is a model that could be replicated, you know, in any community that has a library system. Next slide, please. Uh, the city of Loveland used Quickwin funding to purchase bicycle fix-it stations and signage for a 57th Street Bicycle and Pedestrian Improvements Project. This project benefited two regional trails, a regional bus route and priority populations like low-end community members and vulnerable roadway users. While providing an immediate community resource, these new materials also created an opportunity for educational bike repair programming and that can be implemented in the future. And one of the project sponsors noted, these are the kinds of details that can make our trails especially user-friendly during a time when they're in high demand. Next slide, please. So as a final example, uh, in the town of Berthoud, they use quick wind funding to improve walkability and make it safer for children to walk and bike to school through the, through the creation of bump outs uh, to shorten crossing distances at busy intersections. Uh, the project started through parent advocacy, wanting to see safer walking routes for school children uh, and became a community-wide priority that led to walk audits, and the pursuit of additional safe routes to school funding. The mayor noted that this project allows for more physical activity, interaction with local businesses, and less social isolation. Next slide, please. 
So CDPHA enjoys providing this funding opportunity and we went to support applicants. Some tips for successful funding include proposing projects that can be implemented quickly. So kind of the concept of shovel ready, although many of these don't require a shovel. Um, we encourage you to think small but impactful. Um, find a way to pilot to prove a concept or use uh, quick wins to leverage um, for greater funding in the future. Um, we wanna see a demonstration of local support and how pro the project addresses an express community need or ties to an existing policy. Uh, and we wanna see you integrate equity. So highlight how the project eliminates a barrier or increases access to safe and accessible physical activity for low end communities, people with disabilities, older adults, um, and other populations of the like. Next slide, please. Um, so as this year's application process demonstrates, there is a great need for quick win funding and we encourage, we encourage local cities and towns to consider developing a local quick win opportunity open to residents and community groups. Um, this is a small budget, but high impact way of, you know, in, uh, leaning into community cohesion uh, and using it as a form of, you know, additional community engagement to better understand what your residents prioritize and what they need. Um, and so two communities that have existing uh, quick win opportunities for their, their residents and community members are um, Englewood has the Englewood Neighborhood Improvement Grant, which is up to $3,000 for projects to implement um, new improvements to neighborhoods, as well as, uh, I realize I have a typo, the Denver Community Active Living Coalition, or CALC, has a micro grant for both individuals and businesses to support community leaders and projects that um, promote active transportation and, and community health. So those are um, two communities that you can look to if you're interested in starting your own quick win opportunity for your residents. Next slide, please. So that's a short overview of the Active People Healthy Colorado Quick, quick Win Project. Thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to answering your questions in the panel later on. Thank you very much, Steph. So our next presenter is Nathan Lindquist, um, who will be talking about revitaling main streets. Nathan is a land use planner with the Colorado Department of Transportation, which is a new, a new position created in 2021. Uh, previously, Nathan was a planning director and assistant city manager for the city of Rifle. Nathan has a master's in urban and regional planning from the University of North Carolina. I'll let you take it away, Nathan. Thanks, Dylan. Hi, everybody. And uh, just to bounce off of some of what Steph was saying at CDPG, it's great to see a lot of uh, different state agencies kind of converging around the same goals and types of projects that we want to fund because of just how many different uh, societal benefits are involved with these kind of multimodal quick win projects that people can really see the difference in their communities, um, whether it's from public health to transportation to land use to uh, other things that we all know that these kind of projects can help with. So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about revitalizing main streets, but first you can go to the next slide. Um, just wanted to kind of highlight that we do have a good grant opportunities website. And actually we'll just come up if you just uh, Google CDOT grants, where we've tried to put all of these on one, one page. Um, but we were talking today about Riley's Main Street, but there's also TAP, MMOF, Safe Routes to School, TDM, and then various new TDM grants through um, Office of uh, Innovative Mobility at CDOT. So we're, we've got a lot of new opportunities and want to make sure everybody can access them as we kind of move towards our goals to implement a more multimodal transportation system at CDOT. Next slide. So with Revitalizing Main Streets, we've got the large grants, Opportunity One, and those are capital projects up to $2 million. We did one round of those grants last summer and then are about to announce awards for another round of those grants for what we hope is $32 million if some additional funding from the legislature come through. And those are obviously larger projects tend to be, you know, 
um, sidewalks over a half mile or more or full street rebuilds. But really the, the purpose of today's conversation is more the small grants. These are community projects up to $150,000 um, and very similar to what Steph was talking about. Um, it started out during the pandemic, especially with helping with a lot of the outdoor dining and outdoor seating and, and all the infrastructure was needed as people moved more outdoors during the pandemic. And now as we transition out of that, um, we're seeing, you know, especially a need for improved sidewalks, improved intersections, um, things that can be more walkable and bikeable in communities. And also looking at downtown vitality, but obviously downtowns mean different things to different communities. Not every community has a historic downtown. So we look at the term downtown is pretty flexible. Next slide. As far as the, the funding that's come into this, this kind of outlines, it's took a, taken a bit of a winding road of different funding sources coming through. But now with that uh, Senate Bill 260 that was passed, we've got $6.9 million in funding for this upcoming fiscal year 23. And then we've got somewhere between three and seven million coming in annually uh, through fiscal year 32. So good news is right eyes and main streets will be around for a while. Next slide. Um, again, we talked about Opportunity One grants that we're just working on awarding those. And then we reopened the small grants for Opportunity Two on February 18th. And um, there's no deadline for these grant applications, but we're awarding them on a rolling basis is the other important thing to um, note on that. So you can apply pretty much any time and then every month we're going to be making awards. And we on that committee also is uh, members of Steph's team uh, at CDPHE and DOLA. And so we've got a good interagency group working on that and helping us get the word out. Next slide. Um, as I said, $150,000, we're really focusing on projects that are on urban arterials or main street corridors. You can apply for both on system and off system projects, meaning whether it's a CDOT state highway or it's a local street. Uh, we just do special use permits for uh, when they're on a state highway. You can uh, use design expenses. Um, and we obviously, you have to get the executed PO before starting work. And there is a 10% match requirement that we did make. Um, firm for this round so kept it very low but did did make it a 10 percent match requirement now next slide i think i already talked about some of this as far as downtown vitality the scoring active transportation safety those are the two biggest pieces you can keep going and then the other pieces are equity public support or relation to community plans. And we're trying to more with, you know, given I come from a city background, we, we, rather than just letters of support, we're trying to move towards looking at like, can you demonstrate that you actually did community output, community uh, outreach through some community planning efforts. And then we we have the, the scoring and 80 points is kind of the limit at which you get awarded. But then if you don't get awarded, you can just, we kind of give you some feedback so we want to try and get everybody to the 80 point level. Um, and hopefully, you know, the goal is to try and make awards as frequently as we can and work with folks to, to get to the 80 point level. So people can just submit again for the next month. Next slide. A couple I, examples of projects, you know, Grand Junction wayfinding and the quote there with, um, was a great example of how modest funds can have an outsized impact. And that was a great project to uh, just help people walk and bike around Grand Junction. Next slide. Littleton, this was more of a kind of a, a you know, especially a big, these kind of projects during COVID were really important. Um, doing the outdoor dining and getting all that infrastructure in and, and saving businesses along the way. Next slide. Mountain Village uh, enhanced the public plaza. Again, this was kind of like a pandemic related 
getting people outside. But what's been cool to see is a lot of these projects continuing. Um, obviously, as everyone knows, there's been kind of some projects that kept going, some that went to more of a seasonal level, um, and some that got scaled back. But it's been great to see the ones that have kept going. Next slide. And then these are more the big grants, but just some of the examples of how, you know, especially there's a bit much bigger focus for CDOT and others around trying to get first last mile to transit. Um, and so we've been glad to do this project and some others on the next slide, city of Broomfield, you can go to the city of Denver, West Colfax, that was a big $10 million grant through an initial round of revitalizing main streets. Next slide. So we, as we said, uh, Fahad, Fahad Khan is the, the program manager. He and I work really closely on these projects. Um, and so we're always happy to talk to uh, cities as far as um, looking at how we can how we can help you get these projects going. Tony Brindisi is the region one contact. Um, one thing I'll also note is that for these small grants, the $150,000 and lower, you know, if you've gotten the lar large CDOT grants before, you tend to be managed, the grants managed through the local agency process, which follows more CDOT standards and uh, project management. But with these small grants, even if you're doing a sidewalk or something involving intersections, um, we, we're putting them back on local, local um, kind of accountability for for engineering and sign off rather than um, typically how CDOT does the big projects where we're still doing the engineering sign off. So that's one way to get them going faster and, and let the locals um, handle their own engineering and project management from that side. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Dylan. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Nathan. Um, next up, we have Dan Maples um, from the city of Edgewater. Dan Maples has been the city of manager of Edgewater since, since September of 2019. Previously, Dan was the deputy city manager, community services director, and parks and recreation director for the city of Edgewater, all since 2009. Dan has overseen many large capital projects for Edgewater and with the incredible staff continues to develop safer streets for the community. Dan, I'll let you take it from here. All right, thanks, Dylan. Uh, go ahead into the next slide. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, just it, it's, it's one project and it's kind of a lifespan of a project that we've been doing on uh, 25th Avenue, which is kind of our main street corridor. And then how some of these um, state grants have helped move this project along, I guess, is, is how I'm going to tackle this a little bit. So um, so here's just kind of an overview of I, I'm calling it the evolution of 25th Avenue. Right. Uh, we started with in, in 2019, the approval of our traffic calming and mobility plan uh, that started to really um, get us thinking about improvements into infrastructure and uh, really switching the priority from from vehicles um, to pedestrian and, and, and bicycle. So that was a, a major change for us. And that worked into a temporary pop up event that we'll talk to that we received a quick wins grant um, and that uh, rotated into to COVID, which uh, changed around everything we thought we knew about the street, uh, which was actually helpful. It, it was, uh, it, I know COVID wasn't helpful for much, but it, it actually helped us envision a, a different, uh, a different view of, of our, our main street corridor, which, which, you know, was part of this. Uh, and then we moved into a more refined design uh, for the corridor. Um, from there, we, we received a revitalizing main street grant uh, to do the construction. And uh, then we're moving towards a completed project. Right now we are we are working with CDOT to finalize uh, materials for our, our to advertise uh, the project right now. So that's kind of where we are right now with that project. So uh, next slide. Uh, let's see. So Edgewater, just a little his, history on, on Edgewater. We're, we're 0.7 square miles, we're a pretty small municipality. We're lot, landlocked in between Denver, Wheat Ridge, and Lakewood. Uh, our, our main street corridor is 25th Avenue. Um, and that's what we, we kind of call our main street. We have several uh, business corridors within Edgewater, but that's, that's kind of the small business, um, a lot of restaurants, bars and restaurants. Um, it, it spans between Sheridan and Gray Street, um, but there is a, a large residential um, 
component between there. So they're kind of separated with some facts. So we've always struggled to keep these, um, this corridor locked together as a commercial corridor. Uh, but for us, uh, the key was really to provide a better pedestrian, multimodal and bicycle access to the corridor without hindering the need for traffic and businesses, which um, on, on a small street like 25th Avenue is, is always a challenge, All right? So next slide. So stage one, uh, the traffic calming mobility plan. Um, this was really, um, we brought in a consultant to do this um, in, in 2018 and into 2019. And it was a public process with our community to, to basically kind of redefine the way we look at infrastructure and, and prioritize areas that need change. Um, so this, this started to give us some direction of, of where we needed to go. Um, it, it also provided us a lot of education to our community. Um, and sorry, there's a typo and a toolkit. It's actually a toolkit for residents and staff to utilize. So it, it started to lay out some of those tools um, that we could use to, to help with traffic calming and, um, and mobility issues that we've been seeing. Um, and this was kind of the goal statement. Traffic calming mobility plan moves edge order forward, improving mobility choices by identifying and prioritizing transportation investments that will make the city and streets safer and more people friendly while ultimately improving the resilience of the Edgewater community. So that was kind of the first stages of our, of our process in, in, in 25th was, was this plan. All right, next slide. All right, so stage two, this is uh, our, our temporary pop-up event and, and we received a, uh, a quick wins grant for, for $5,000 in 2019 and this was pre-COVID. So this is us taking a look at this, uh, this corridor and seeing what we could do with it um, and then laying out some temporary measures to see and test them with our community, with the businesses. Um, it was a very eye-opening experience, I think, for all of us because it started to open up some of our, our business leaders in the area to you know, what, what this could mean for them with, with bumped out areas for extra patio spaces and, and, and slower traffic, additional areas of safe parking along the street just some things that we hadn't, we hadn't really done for a long time. So it did give us a, a time to test, educate some of the new tools of our, our traffic calming and mobility plan. Uh, we, we used all temporary materials. And I apologize, these, these two pictures at the bottom, it looks like us doing the work, but those aren't ours. <laughs> those are pulled from somewhere else. I, I, we, we had a trouble finding uh, actual pictures of, of our guys installing, but this is what we did. We actually bought a lot of used turf and and uh, AstroTurf and we put it at the corners to kind of lay out these, these areas and these corners to do our bump outs. We did do some uh, temporary traffic circles in, in two of the intersections here. Uh, the circles were really just done with um, uh, some of those temporary speed bump rubber material. Uh, we just made a circle out of those and put those out. Um, we were, the good thing about the, the Quick Wins grant is we were able to utilize it very quickly. I think as soon as we learned, we were able to to hit the ground and, and lay this out uh, and start talking to business owners. So it, it happened very quickly, which is great. Um, and then we really were able to do a really good evaluation of, of you know, this, this pop-up event too. We did, we did surveys before and after to all the businesses and, and the people frequenting these businesses. Um, we also did some speed testing uh, before we laid everything out and then after just to see if it really did slow people down. Um, I, I think we learned a lot, um, especially with some of these smaller uh, traffic circles in the smaller, the smaller intersections and, and trying to get some of the truck traffic there for deliveries for restaurants. We learned real quick as they ran over our, our, uh, our roundabouts fairly quickly. So uh, it, it, was a, it was definitely a, a really good learning experience before we put something concrete in. So it was, it was helpful for us to learn. Okay, next slide. Then uh, COVID, and, and I know COVID had a lot of negatives, but it, it did help us envision maybe even a different look um, of, of this 25th Avenue. So it, it extended some time for temporary improvements. So we, we did end up uh, putting temporary improvements out there, as you can see on the left side there, uh, with some extended patio spaces. So it made us think a little differently as um, our, our pop-up event, we were running 25th Avenue as a two-way street, um, both uh, east and west. And then uh, as COVID hit, we, we, we moved it into a one-way, uh, prioritizing some of these spaces for businesses, as well as um, maintaining our, our bike lanes through the, through the corridor too. Um, so this is, this is kind of a, a, an interesting change for us, but it, it helped a lot. Um, let's see, 
I, you can kind of see the bottom picture there. That was kind of the layout that we took uh, during COVID. So it, it helped change it. Some of the things carried over, some of the, the things from our, our pop-up and from our original look at, at 25th Avenue and our, our traffic calming and mobility plan carried over. But, but this is a good, a good change for us to learn some other things that we should be thinking about. Okay, next slide. Um, here we took some time, um, still in COVID, we took some time to really evaluate these designs. We hired a landscape ar architect and a, a traffic engineer to come, come and help us do some final design work on the corridor. Uh, we held several public meetings, uh, virtual and, and with business owners. Um, and then I, I think one of the coolest things that, that I've been a part of was uh, we, we did uh, bring our West Metro Fire, um, we had them come out and they brought their biggest trucks, which we didn't know they had trucks that big, but they brought them out and drove the corridor as we had it set up. So we set everything up the way we were intending to uh, install it uh, with paint. And you can see on the, the bottom left corner, we, we had the armadillo shells out there too. And, and we set everything up there um, as we were going to um, finalize this design and then had them drive through it. And, and probably the, the coolest thing is uh, our traffic engineer flew a drone above it. I would show you a video, but it's really long and, and uh, um, I couldn't get it to, to work. So, uh, but we were able to fly a drone above and, and watch the trucks turn and watch, you know, their, their turning radiuses and, and how they navigated through some of these corners that we were um, talking about putting in. Even the landscape, some of the things that, that, that we were talking, we, we were able to look at that and then, and then make some small changes to, to make sure that, that, you know, that any new changes would, um, would help, you know, that, that these trucks would be able to get in. And actually, I, I think it helped us uh, with the fire department too, because then they were kind of on board. So we've, we've done a few like this, but nothing with the drone and everything else. This was a little bit above and beyond, but it was, it was a great activity that we did. So, all right, next slide. Uh, stage five was really the, the revi re revitalizing Main Street grant. Um, and we were awarded eight hundred forty-one thousand uh, dollars for this project, and that's that was about sixty-two point seven percent of the project. We had we had a, a, a pot of money that we'd been saving up for for this project for a while. Um, we also have our redevelopment authority that was pitching in the the, uh, the key chunk of the money too. So we were able to fund a little bit more and, and ask for a little bit less, which is good for us. Um, let's see, ability to utilize a past designs. So everything that we I kind of talked through, we were able to utilize to apply for this Main Street grant, which was really helpful. Just all the stages and, and all the steps that we took um, helped us really show, you know, that we've done our due diligence and, and that, that we are ready to, to make these changes. Um, it, I, I think uh, the project has turned out to be a larger partnership with CDOT. Um, we are currently in, it's not in here, but we are currently working with CDOT on a, a, a shared in corridor master plan, um, which Sheridan is tied into 25th. So it, it, it started to open up a lot of partnerships and, and open discussions, both with 25th and Sheridan, um, because they do have that connection. So it was actually a really good next step for us to, to get. All right, uh, next slide. Um, and then the completed project, and it, we're currently working with CDOT on the final design approvals. Um, we're hoping to advertise for contractors this fall in 2022. It was a little bit longer than expected. I, I think early on we thought we could we could get things done uh, quickly, but the, um, <laughs> the the processes I think were a little bit longer. We needed a little bit more work on some of our designs and to get to final. So so and, and knowing also that we have businesses in this corridor and we did not want to be doing construction during the summer or even spring for that matter, um, where a lot of those um, businesses really thrive with, with the outdoor. So we, we put it off until about fall of 2022. So we're hoping that, uh, that we'll, we'll get to that. Um, you know, special thanks, you know, obviously to Dr. Cog, CDOT. I, I think these grants are, are great. Um, they've, they've helped us push this project along, which has been great. And, and as a small community and being able to fund little bits and pieces as we go and, and, and find money for you know, little pieces to keep things moving has been great. So big thanks there. Uh, and, and really thanks to, I guess, all our staff and boards and commissions too, because this, is, this, is, this has been a, a project that's taken, I think everyone here, it's, it's, I, I'm talking about it, but there's so many more people here involved in it early on and, and right now. So, so appreciate all that. Uh, I think that's the last slide, but if you wanna go. 
Yep, that's it. So thank you. Well, thanks to all of our panelists. Um, I would invite you all to turn on your videos if you're comfortable with doing so. Um, to anybody that wants to go ahead and dump any questions into the Q&A feature. Um, I see the first one here, I'll just throw it to Dan really quickly. Dan, somebody, uh, Tom asks if uh, that is Dan Burden that he saw in the picture on stage five. <laughs> he is well known. Yes, that was Dan Burden. He, he actually, uh, Blue Zones, we works for the, the, the company, was our consultant that wrote the traffic calming and mobility plan. Excellent. Um, just a couple other questions. So this one's for Steph and Nathan. Um, are there any kinds of projects that you avoid funding? Um, I'll let Steph answer that first. So um, within our funding, we have kind of like a broad scope, but then uh, like with a more specific focus. So we're funded by the Centers for Disease Control and prevention for um, physical activity work. So like we can fund anything kind of related to physical activity um, with our more narrow focus on um, things that are related to more active transportation and streetscape improvements. Like that's gonna probably, it's gonna score higher. Um, but with that scope, um, the main thing is making sure that your project can actually be delivered in the time frame that uh, is required. So for our quick ones that just went out, they have to be completed by September 29th of this year. So we were getting some where it's like planning and then like we can install later on. So like that's one key piece. Um, and currently we're just doing equipment based or like materials based projects uh, with the hope of like um, in the future, doing more of like a community engagement um, component. So we can't fund like incentives and staff time or like installation costs or anything like that. So um, it's more like if there's, um, as long as it falls within the relevance, we'll consider it, but we can't cons um, fund those specific components. Yeah, and then for revitalizing Main Street, I think, there's nothing too specific. I think some of the things we look out for are sometimes projects um, <clears throat> are maybe part of a development. And so the committee looks at it to say, should this be something that the private development should be paying for rather than with public taxpayer dollars? Um, similarly, like sometimes it'll, if it's a capacity increasing project on a roadway um, and that seems to be the primary goal um, the committee will look at it and say, well, it was the goal of this project really um, walkability, bikeability, or more of a capacity project. But, and then other, we've gotten some requests for like restrooms and sometimes they'll approve the restroom request if they really can show that this public restroom in this location is really gonna increase active transportation and vitality. Um, but that can be a tougher case to make, but not impossible. So. Those are a couple of the things, but um, we haven't really drawn a lot of hard lines about things we won't fund. Excellent, thank you to you both. Um, so Steph, Tom asks, uh, on one of your slides, you mentioned that the grants are to $5,000. Was the walkability bulb outs and birth it funded with $5,000? So, um... For context, I was not here at the time, Tim, but my understanding is that was um, used to supplement some larger budget. So like um, the town wasn't able to do the full project on their own, but the $5,000 could be lumped in with um, some of the, the town's funding as well. Thank you, Steph. I'm seeing a question in the chat here. Um, let's see, Steve asks, we applied for and received the Main Street grant last year. This appears to be the same program. Any differences? Also, we received funding last year. Are we limited this year or do we start with zero dollars? Nathan? Good question. I should have had that on the screen. Yes, yeah, so this is the same $150,000 and less program. Previously, there was kind of this limit for communities 
up to 250,000. And so we basically started over at zero for the year. And right now we're basically saying one, one uh, award per jurisdiction per uh, year. So basically up to $150,000 a year. So we'll see how that goes based on the demand for the program. And maybe it's possible we could end up doing more than one uh, project per jurisdiction per year. But right now, everybody who was previously maxed out um, is back at zero and very welcome to apply. Uh, Nathan, uh, I'm seeing another question coming in that says, um, their city sometimes is uh, hesitant to apply to CDOT grants because of the onerous grant management process, especially low dollar projects. So the question is how much staff time uh, is required just for the grant management for the revitalizing Main Streets program? So as I, as I touched on a little bit in the presentation with these small grants for the $100,000, $150,000 grants, it's not the typical CDOT process. Um, if you're building a sidewalk, you can build that sidewalk uh, almost exactly like if you've gotten DOLA grants, it's pretty much like a DOLA grant. Like you got to do the reporting, you got to give us your invoices, you got to do a closeout report, send us some pictures to show us you completed it. But the kind of um, level of management that our normal system uh, provides for grants, we do not have in place for these small grants. So that's something we're still fleshing out. Like you know, how to make that work within CDOT, but it's something Director Liu and everybody feels strongly about that, you know, these need to be more quick wins and less onerous given the, the burden on everybody's uh, staff time at the local level um, in today's world. Thank you. So to Steph, uh, there's a question, um, are there, is there any consideration on more funding or another call for products or projects? Um, Thanks. Um, so we, as I noted, we had a cap at $30,000 initially, um, and we were able to internally kind of um, leverage some more funding um, that has a different timeline. Um, and so some projects that were able to be completed quicker than others, we, we reached out to folks um, to see um, or let them know that they were eligible for that additional funding. Um, and that was through our um, comprehensive cancer control program within CDPHE. Um, and then with the, the program that we advertise and the funding that we advertise, we have another uh, round um, for year five that will become available. Um, it's a different fiscal year. Um, so it'll, uh, we'll probably announce that later this fall. Um, and we're, we're still trying to see if we can um, pull a few more dollars out of some of our um, internal funds. Um, but at the time, um, that's, that's all we're going to be able to do, I think, um, for this round. So a question to Dan, why do you think that your application was strong for both of these grants? Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe a better question for the other two, but uh, you know, I, I think it was part of a bigger process, right? And, and I think it was a fully thought out process with a plan. So, you know, with the traffic calming mobility plan, we had kind of everything laid out um, as to, you know, what we were looking to do as to our goals. We had community, community support already on board through that, that plan. Um, so I, I think it was it was a little, I know from, from my, my point of view, it was a lot easier for me to apply for those grants uh, because we're ready for them. Uh, we really were, so. Yeah, and I, the only thing I'd add to that, that's all true, I think. And then also just for Edgewater, it really was the main street, you know, and some for some towns, they've already been able to improve their main street. And so, their applications have been still a really great project, but when you have low, limited funds to give out, um, things that were, when it's the revitalizing Main Street program, if you got a Main Street project, it definitely helps. Question to Steph. Um, in the case of Edgewater, the community was able to demonstrate the successful application of Quick Wins funding towards a demonstrated need. 
for a more permanent project in the funding term CDOT. Uh, do you typically consider how projects, uh, project investments of quick lending funding will spur something more permanent or are you focused more on short run wins? Yeah, so our goal is to see something more permanent. Um, and we like to see, like, like Dan had mentioned, they had a plan in place and they'd already gone through this process. Um, so that's, you know, the demonstration of local support um, is linked to that piece as well. Like, you know, if there's planning documents, if there's um, community outreach process that's already existing, um, there's already some form of momentum in place. So this, uh, we view the quick wins, obviously there's uh, unlimited scope, $5,000, um, but to as like a means of like a stepping stone, ideally to a longer term, larger scale um, change. And um, that's actually linked to some of the, the components that we track for one of these programs is um, policies throughout the state that are uh, leading to increased um, connections with activity-friendly destinations, um, activity-friendly routes to everyday destinations, so like your community serving land uses. So we track like which municipalities and towns and regions have these policies. And then we also track like are the, when it's being followed through on. And so uh, when new miles are being added. And so those are components that not only we track at the state, but CDC likes to know as well, um, because those are ways of, you know, kind of informing uh, behavior change, how policy can lead to behavior change over time, which has a positive impact on population health over time. So long-winded answer, yes. Thank you, Steph. So another question, what's the advantage of doing a pop-up quick win over detailed plans and images? How do the residents respond differently? Uh, Dan, do you wanna take the first answer on that? Yeah, I'll try and answer it. So uh, for, for us, a pop-up, and it's, it's kind of turned into something we do on a normal process now, we've done a few of them, uh, but pop-ups, it, it's easier to, um, it's easier to get feedback and work with residents when they know it's a temporary change. Um, as opposed to putting concrete in and fighting everything uh, from day one. So uh, traffic circles were a, a big, uh, the mobility plan really uh, hinted that we should be looking at um, traffic circles instead of traffic lights. And so we were starting to move that way. But we had a, a large contingency of, of residents that just did not want to see a traffic circle anywhere near Edgewater. So you know, to be able to put some temporary things in where they can actually see what it really does, it, it really helped. And honestly, we learned a lot because we put those traffic circles in, you know, that one quarter, we put two of them in, in two intersections and just the feedback and the amount of maintenance we had with trucks just blowing through them, we knew they weren't going to work in those locations. So, you know, our final plans don't have traffic circles. They're one way instead of two ways. So um, it, it was a, it was a good learning experience for us. And, and actually our, our, our residents really have liked it. We've started to move into using some temporary measures for like residential calming devices too, because we get a lot of complaints, I'm sure as everyone does for speeding through neighborhoods. And so once we have a neighborhood that, that comes together and, and has those issues, we, we can go in there and do some, some median work or, or some mid block, you know, crossings, whatever we can do uh, temporarily just to show them, you know, some of these tools that, that we've learned and, and what will help. And, and we tend to get a lot better support, you know, for, for permanent infrastructure that way. Great, thank you. That's it as far as I'm seeing the Q&A in the chat. Um, if there's anything else that uh, folks have that they wanna go ahead and throw in the chat or the Q&A, make sure to go ahead and address those here. Seeing none, is there anything in terms of closing thoughts from Steph, Dan, or Nathan that you want to add um, that you feel like was not covered yet? I don't have anything. Thank you. Thanks, Dylan, for putting this on it. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Dylan, and everybody for joining. Appreciate it. Sounds good. 
So this presentation will be posted on drcock.org on the events page, um, and this should be up in a few days. Um, so look out for that. Um, and other than that, feel free to send me. Um, yeah, feel free to reach out to me with any questions, and I'm happy to direct them to any of the panelists as needed. Um, thanks so much, and have a great rest of the day, everyone. Thanks, everybody.